All right, we are recording. December 19th call. So I'm excited for this call. I think it's going to be pretty cool. We asked the uh, 2017 coaches, the class of 2017, uh, some of the coaches that, that signed up this year to hop on here, and they don't know what's coming. Like, we didn't tell them what questions we're going to ask. We told them it's going to be really unscripted, off the cuff, going to keep it super informal so they didn't have to memorize anything. So we're going to ask a bunch of questions, and uh, you, class of 2017, can kind of hop in if you feel like you want to share for that particular question. We just kind of throw your name in the chat or raise your hand, and we'll try to get to you. If you don't feel like sharing for that question, no big deal. We like to keep things real fun here, no pressure. Um, so we're going to do that. But before that, we're going to jump into recognition. So I'm going to throw it over to Brooke. We're going to hit uh, success club so far and uh, maybe some weak leg team volume, maybe top 20 most personal volume points for the week. Who knows? Um, okay. I didn't, I didn't know that you wanted me to do that, so I don't have anything up yet. But if you want to hold tight, I can grab it. Is it in the boom fam? Um, which one? Did, you can start with whichever one you want to start with. Okay. Well, it's family. going to be whichever one pops up first on the feed. Probably FC, I guess. <laughs> I didn't know. Okay, here we go. Life changers. Ready? Again, sorry for the, the manly voice. Okay. At SC4 so far for December is Jessica Halfpop, um, Alexis Kar Kotarski, Kirsten Watts, Callie Blumenfeld, Jen Sansoni, Aaliyah Bab, Elizabeth Bradshaw, Olivia Brackett, Brittany Havens, Matthew Jackson, Deirdre Wilson, Kylie Winay. Mackenzie Chase, Celine Picardi, Erica Gordon, Gordon, myself, Brooke Reed, Tyler Smith, uh, Andrea Wallace, Emily Bocklet, Susanna Bell, Danielle Hills, Nicoletta Sidowich, and then um, at SC6, already at SC for the month, is Michelle Humerich, Kelsey Connor, Lindsay Schiff, Beth McDonald, Chris Bocklet, Kelly Marks, Bailey Glanzer, Lauren, oh, nope, nope, Kelly Marks, and then at eight is Bailey Glanzer, Lauren Letary, and El Deal. And then at 10 at the top is Marie Sardelli and Patrick Realman. And 12 is Cassie Schmelzinger. 18 is Ashley Feld Dyson. 22 is Amy Realman. And 34 is Kate Morgan. That's freaking amazing. That's, sorry, that's amazing. You can say freaking on the call. <laughs> um, I'm just looking for the other one, but I don't see it yet. The weak leg team volume one? Uh, I have overall top volume from December 15th. Yeah, that, that's, we can do that one. I'll do that one. Okay, overall top volume 20. Um, at the bottom is Tiffany Gush. L do you want me to say the number? Um, you can just say, like, if they're in the 200s. Through okay, the well, that's that. Okay, so in the 200s is Tef Tiffany Gush, L. Deal, Chris Bocklet, Andrea Wallace, Valerie Nelson, Amanda Piero. Kate Morgan, Bailey Glanzer, April M. Garrison, Tanya Carr Waldron, Katie Talbot, Susanna Bell, Bridget Moore, and in the 300s is Ashley Coyne, Kate McGinty, Amy Realman, and in the 400s is Carrie Steelman, Ashley Fell Dyson, 500s, Alyssa Sardelli, and, uh, and Patrick Realman in 500s also. That's amazing. You, if you can find the weak leg team volume. So while you're looking for that, I can kind of explain for the newer coaches. So what she just read is the top 20 personal volume. So personal volume, we call that PV. That comes from your personal orders and your customers' orders. So those were the top 20 coaches last week as far as how much personal volume they created. That's kind of the first way you earn is your customers ordering from you. The second thing that Brooke's going to read now is team volume. That's kind of the second way you earn. So that comes from as you start to build a team of coaches, everything the team buys and sells, you start to get a team bonus based on how well your team's doing. So, and that's based on your left and your right leg. Uh, one of the things we always say is like, you're kind of only as strong as your weakest leg. So we do a recognition that kind of shows like how, how much team volume do you have in your weaker of your two legs? So we call that the weak leg uh, team volume recognition post. Yep. You'll get right. it. You guys will get it. It's easy. <laughs> I got it. Okay. So in the 300 club is Carrie Stillman Schmidt, Cassandra Schmelzinger, Daniel Hills, Craig Schmidt, Emily Crushore, Shauna Valenta, Peter Realman, Michelle Katz, 
um, Marybeth Darling, Margaret Mackerer, Anne Marie Vichers, and Jill Wagner. In the 500s Club is Joe Policino, uh, um, Emily Bocklet, Delaney Cleason, Robert Rodriguez, Stacy Slade, Brooke Reed, myself, Valerie McKellum, and Patrick Roman in his third business center. The 1000 Club is Tyler Smith, Gage Ecker, Alyssa Sardelli, Chris Bocklet, Marie Sardelli, Charles Wallace, Ashley Feld Dyson, Wade Kephart, Amy Morgan, and Terry Bocklet. The 3000 Club is Patrick Roman in his second business center and Amy Roman. 5000 Club is Michelle Phillips, Andrea Wallace, Patrick Roman, and in the 10,000 Club is Beth Roman. That's freaking awesome. All right, boom. So that's your TV, that's your team volume. So, uh, Beth Realman leading the way there with team volume. She's got two super strong legs. Even though I signed her up, her weak leg is stronger than my weak leg, and that's how you can earn more than the person that signed you up, which is pretty freaking cool. So it's all based on, on how hard you work, not on when you signed up. So for those that just hopped on, uh, this call, it, we're calling it the class of 2017 represent. So we just asked, uh, the class of 2017 coaches that signed up this year to hop on here and they don't know what we're going to ask. Um, we're going to keep it unscripted off the cuff kind of thing. Brooke's going to hit them with some questions. I might jump in and just ask a little bit about themselves just so we get to know them a little bit more. Um, but we're just kind of, kind of wing it and get to get to hear from them. What's what they're doing. That's been killing it this year. Um, and, uh, yeah, nothing scripted. So this will be kind of fun. So, Brooke, why don't you kick it off with your first question, and then after she asks, you guys can either throw your name in the chat if you want to chat, or if you want to just raise your hand, and we'll kind of try to call you um, and make sure we hit everybody. So let's do this. Okay, cool. All right, so um, Pat had some ideas for questions. I had some ideas for questions, and I um, asked my team for some ideas for questions. So... Um, I think we have a bunch of good ones for you guys. So, um, and as Pat said, if you don't feel comfortable or you don't want to um, answer one of the questions for whatever reason, don't feel pressured. So the first one I had is, what are you doing to get ready for the 80 day um, obsession launch? Like anything, you know, anything special that you're doing that's really working for you, anything. All right. Yeah. Beth. So yeah. Beth. You can unmute yourself. And then if anyone else wants to share too, just put your name in the chat and we'll, and I'll hit you guys up next. Just because my daughter's in the room next to us. Can you hear me? Yes. Yeah, yeah. Okay, cool. So, so before you share that real quick, um, why don't you share where you're from, who your coach is, okay. how long you watch them. And, and then, and then when you, what was your last question? Did I join a challenge group? So first is, where are you from? We'll just Philly, Philadelphia, Philly. Philly. loud and proud. Nice, nice. Uh, who's your coach? Mary Beth Darling. Mary Beth Darling, awesome. And her coach is Andrew. Annie, okay. yep. Uh, okay, so how long did you watch her before you decided to join? Did you do the challenge group before you became a coach? I never did a challenge group before I became a coach. You jumped right into the business. How long did you watch before you decided to, to become a coach? Um, probably about a year. Okay, cool. Sounds yeah. about right. Yeah. Um, and then when did you become a coach? I became a coach um, about six or seven months before Summit last year, but then I didn't do anything with the business until I went to Summit. And then when I left Summit, I felt like, okay, I have all the tools I need. So now I'm ready to do this. Awesome. Cool. So you watched it for a year, became a coach, watched a little bit longer, went to summit and then did it. Just yeah, I, I really, I really just did it to became a coach for the discount. So I was like, I don't want into this business. I have my own job. Um, I did not commit to, to doing it until I was like, Hmm, this kind of looks like it would be a fun community to be part of. Gotcha. So you did kind of do a challenge group first before you decided to really do the business. It was kind I, of I, signed up for the discount and got involved with the community and then we're like, okay, this business yeah. sounds cool. Yeah. Not like a challenge group like we have now, but just watching her challenge groups. Gotcha. Okay, yeah. cool. Yeah. All right. So what's your, what's your plan with, uh, with the launch? Okay. So 
Um, I'm like all over 80 day obsession. I feel like it's like the launch of 21 day fix all over again, where like everybody is obsessed with getting the newest, best thing out there. So I did listen to the national wake up call. I think two weeks ago when Miguel did it with Craig from corporate and just the energy itself and everything they told us and everything they shared, like I couldn't type faster than I was typing. I'm like, I'm a fast typer and this is ridiculous. So I listened to it three times. I went back, I wrote all my notes down, I went to my team, I said, here's all my notes, let's compare notes before we start communicating this because I wanna sound educated before I go out there and start communicating. I did everything they said. I downloaded everything in the Coach Online office. I emailed all the current customers. I looked at everybody who has VOD without Shakeology. And then I created a holding group, which is exactly what they told us to do. And you know, Brooke's in my holding group now, she can probably, tell you how I'm in the holding group as much as I'm in, in my regular challenge group. So every single day I post everything about it. I go live in there. I talked about Q and A in there when I went live doing that. Um, I have 58 people who committed to the 80 day obsession with me. Oh. So those are majority of current customers, but those majority of current customers had already stopped Shakeology, needed to buy the mega pack, needed to buy the accessories, and then added on the 20% off for the performance line. So I, I spent a lot of time educating myself in order to educate them, which I thought was key because I didn't want to sound like I didn't know anything about this program. So every, every time Autumn went live in Beachbody Champions, I watched it. Even if it was an hour, I listened to it in the car while I was driving. I found like little pockets of time instead of doing my vitals, which I should have been doing, to educate myself on this program because that was more important is to be able to tell these 58, almost 60 people who committed what's, what's this all about and why am I excited? When they were on that national wake up call, their excitement was so, so elevated that I felt like I drank energized while I was on the call and I didn't. And I was like, so pumped up. I went live. I was like, I have to tell all of you guys about this. Everybody in my challenge groups, you have to get in this. You have to do this with me. I'm not doing it alone. And like my energy created, their energy created my energy and then my energy created their energy. And that's what we do. We create energy and then people come to us based on the energy we have. So awesome. my, my overexcitement kind of grew that. And now I'm in, I, I did post in our Team Boom Coaches page that you guys are all welcome to join that group. If you are wanting to do this yourself and you just want to take, like say you don't have time. So you're like, I don't have time to get on the, all these calls. I offered to put you all in my group so that you can take my pictures and my posts and just copy and paste them in yours so that you you know, are educating yourself quick, quickly so that you can give the same level to your customers. That's awesome. Cool. So. Listen to the 80 day obsession national call, then reach out. You reach out to existing coaches. So, if anyone has listen to that, I'm going to mute you for a sec. I think there's a little. So, if you haven't listened to that national call, you can listen to the recording of the, where they talked about 80 day obsession. It was Kim Carver and Miguel Carrasco. Such a great call. Reaching out to existing customers, huge. Watch Autumn live, her live videos in the Beachbody Champions. If you're not in the Beachbody Champions Facebook page, you got to add yourself to that. It's a great group. Autumn goes live in there. She also has some stuff on her YouTube channel. Energy creates energy. Obviously, that's huge. And then if you, if you want to create your own holding group and do those things, like that's probably the most beneficial. But if you don't want to, then Beth is offering to let you in her holding group. And maybe, Beth, you could share the link in the chat for people. Awesome. That was, that was, that was on point. Thank you, Beth. All right. So next we got Lindsay Skiff. Let's see if I can find her on here. I unmuted myself. Okay, awesome. <laughs> so Lindsay, where are you from? I'm from Chicago. Nice. Um, yeah. I've been a coach for like six months now. Six months. Who's your coach? Have I, have I ever heard of him? You never heard of him. I don't think. Uh, Chris Bocklet is my coach and also my boyfriend. So it's quite weird to call him my coach, nice. but boyfriend, he is. coach, cool. Um, and how long were you kind of watching Chris with this whole coaching thing before you said, all right, I think I want to do it too. Um, 
six months and it wasn't even the watching that made me want to be a coach. I was like, this is not for me at all. But he took me on the success club trip last year and it a hundred percent sold me <laughs> the foam club or the foam parties changed lives thing. That's, that's what got me to be a coach for real. <laughs> two for two. So Beth and Lindsay, it was the events that did it. For yeah. hundred percent. Cool. All right. So what's, uh, what's the game plan for 80 day obsession? Yeah, game plan. So this is for my side hustle, hustle coaches. Um, the holding group for me has been like the most amazing thing. And I think um, you like leveraging a launch with a holding group makes it super easy. But for me, it's cut my invites down from like having to message each individual person to be able to throw them all into one group and still feel like I'm giving them all the information they need. And they're still, you know, hearing it from me and feeling like they're making a connection with me, um, has been so huge for me. I've sold, um, four just from literally the holding group and probably two messages back and forth. And like, it's done. You do, you share a cart and it's been like the biggest time saver for me. And I also think that going off the energy, um, vibe just with the launch and the new year you have so many exciting things to talk about and it's the one time of year that people are actively looking for something to change their health and fitness so like if you're not talking about something beach body like you're you're just being so stupid because people are looking for you this one time of year and so for me it's just almost been easy like the more i'm talking about it people are like finding me as opposed to a lot of other months I'm having to go out searching for people. So having this holding group and being like, you know, someone messages me and they're like interested and I'm like, Oh, let me throw you in this group. I'm explaining all the details here, whatever. And then message me your questions after you've taken a look at everything. I'm going live tonight or whatever it is, um, has just been a huge time saver for the side hustle coaches. <laughs> side hustle coaches. Yeah. Awesome. And you're creating like a sense of community already for people that haven't even bought the challenge pack yet. So they're kind of yeah. getting a taste of what it's going to feel like. And they're Definitely. Gonna and I, I took something, I forget which call it was. I think it might've been the team call last week. Um, but the personal recognition. So every time someone signs up for a challenge pack, I say which one they bought. I put their picture on a thing on a little um, pick monkey or whatever that, that app is called. And I'm like, I write a little personalized blurb about them, but then the graphic is always the same. And those really get the most interaction of all the group. And also another thing with the holding group is most of my posts in the holding group get like one like or two likes, but I'll have like three messages come out of one of my posts. So it's not necessarily like who's liking it, just like your normal Instagram or Facebook posts. It's more of who's watching. So Awesome. So yeah. holding group and then recognition for the people that are like taking that next step is creating excitement for more people to take that next step and buy the, the pack. Yeah. Cool. I know you got to run and you're probably, yeah, sorry, guy. So I was just going to ask you like these people that are, that you say are coming to you. Yeah. Like, what do you think you're doing and that's getting them to come to you and where, like what platform are they coming to? Um, I use Instagram stories every day. Um, and something, I think it was Cam, Cam Jams, I know is her Instagram name, <laughs> yeah, yeah. but she said some, I think it was her, or I don't know, I'm mixing all the team calls up, but someone was like, I show up every day when I'm on vacation, I show up when I have this, I show up. And for me, it's not necessarily that I'm working out every single day. I try to, but even when I'm not, I like pop on my story and I'm like, honest, I'm like, Hey, I didn't work out today, but I'm doing this or I'm doing that. So people are just constantly seeing my face. And I think my stories work a lot better for me than my posts. So being a side hustle coach, writing posts takes me a lot of time. So really, I've only been doing like two a week at this point. But my stories, I do every day because they're fast. And I feel like I can, you know, just do them in real time. Like if I'm working out, I'll just put a video on or if I'm making my shake, like I can record myself making my shake. And I think because at this point, I've stuck with it for so long, and I'm starting to see physical results, but also just people are seeing this isn't like a phase or anything. Um, they're more willing to reach out to me because they know that I'll actually be there for them, as opposed to in the beginning, it was kind of like, I had to sell myself to people 
where now I'll have people like, Oh, you look so great. Like, what are you doing? Or, you know, I keep coming back to your, your thing. Like I don't have the accountability. I keep coming back. That's what keeps coming, bringing me back to like do it. So right. that's what I think has been the game changer. Insta stories are the way to go for sure. Stories. <laughs> stories. So on the national call, Jeff Hill kind of wrapped it up by saying there's three R's relatable, reliable, and recognition. So I think those stories are huge. It makes you relatable because you're a challenger. You're a client right along with these people and you're reliable because you're showing up every day and you've been doing it now for six months. So they know that they can rely on you if they decide to join you. And then you're starting to give recognition on your stories and in the holding groups and in the other groups. So good stuff. Yeah. Awesome. Thank you, Lindsay. That was great. Yeah. Thanks for having me guys. Yeah. Class of 2017. Represent. <laughs> uh, all right, cool. So next we got uh, Trish. Hi, guys. Um, I'm from Key West, Florida. Uh, I'm, actually, I live in Tuscaloosa, Alabama now. But uh, my coach is Danielle Hills. We went to high school together. Nice. Um, I've been watching her, I guess, since, what, July, Danielle, I want to say? July or so. And I've always been inspired in fitness you know like I did CrossFit I was in a former athlete I played college sports and everything and I just was trying to find something with motivation and sorry my dog is like getting in the way and so I just try to find you know that drive I needed something to push me through and you know Danielle's been reaching out to me at the time I couldn't do it and I was like you know I want to but it's not the right time and then I finally said you know what screw it I need to do focus on me and you know I've only been doing it for a couple of weeks but I'm learning to be patient. I'm learning, you know, I got people watching me and, you know, they're, they're sending those messages. So, I mean, that's what I'm doing for right now. That's awesome. So, so you started watching her in July and yeah. then when did you, did you do a challenge group before you became a coach? Yes, I did it in November and I was just inspired and motivation. And I was just like, you know what? I know with my energy, I know I can try to, you know, get people to do it. And I was like, I want to make a difference too. Cool. So you had an awesome experience and you're like, all right, I want to pay this forward. I want to do this for others. Exactly. Cool. Awesome. So sweet. So kind of new to the game. Uh, I'm assuming you probably, what did you do? 21 day fix. Was that kind of the first program? Yeah, I did two rounds of that so far. And two then rounds. I'm going to start a little obsessed tomorrow. Nice. A little, little obsessed sneak peek tomorrow. So what's, what do you think is your kind of your game plan that are you kind of already starting to get ready for the 80 day obsession launch for people? Yeah, um, I have one person that is interested in doing it. And right now she's kind of like, you know, let me get myself in order and everything. But I'm kind of like, let me just get to know more people and then like maybe introduce them later. Right. So, like I'm new to the game, like you said. So I don't want to like overwhelm myself while I'm still like on the same page as them kind of thing. You know, like gotcha. I got to teach them when I'm still learning. Gotcha. So you're kind of like in that phase of becoming – relatable and reliable and consistent yeah. so people can start to trust you and then mm -hmm. they're going to start coming to you because they'll know yeah. that they can trust you as someone that as like a resource which is cool yeah, exactly you're, yeah. on, you're continuing to be a challenger starting to plant seeds build relationships and uh keep doing your own thing right now awesome exactly cool 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 anything else you want to share for now or is that any other 80 day obsession okay. <laughs> right, good cool. day. sweet thank you trish uh, all right, so next we got Jess. Can you guys hear me? Mm -hmm. Yes, gotcha. All right, Jess, so where are you from? Uh, I'm actually from Colorado. Uh, and you, do you still live there now? Yep, yep. We just moved back. My husband's military, so we were in North Carolina for three years, and then we got back here in February. Nice. What's, what's your last name, Jess? It's Half Pop. Half Pop. Sounds okay. Yeah, absolutely. yeah, cool. Okay, so then who's yeah, who's I'm married this? into that one. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, who's uh, who's your coach? Uh, Andy, Andy, Andy Wallace is my coach. I know her, cool. Uh, yeah. so did you meet, did you, did you connect with her through social media or did you know her? How'd you guys connect initially? Um, funny enough, we were both pregnant at the same time, and our sons were both um, supposed to be due in July. And so we actually met through a mom's group and then um, somebody narrowed it down to like what month you were due. And she, uh, she and I connected that way. Cool. So it was, yeah. in a, it was in a Facebook group, a mom's group on Facebook. It was. Awesome. Yeah. And then how long did you, did you watch her on social media before 
you decided to do it. Did you do a challenge group before you became a coach? Uh, no, actually, Annie um, chased me for like a year and I kept telling her, no, nah, you know, I don't think so. I was actually a personal trainer for like three or four years. So um, I have my own garage gym. I did CrossFit, CrossFit for a really long time um, yeah. and I'm getting my master's in nutrition. And so I teach food and food nutrition, paleo primal whole 30 to people. And so I was like, I don't really know. And then she was like killing it after, um, you know, she had her baby. And so I was like, all right, yeah, maybe, maybe I'll try this out. So I signed up in October. October. Awesome. And you just jumped right into like, mm -hmm. you're building your own business in October. You didn't, you didn't do a challenge group or anything off the bat. Do you, do you do challenge groups? I did. Yeah. Well, I signed right up as a coach, but I wanted to do um, one of the programs before I committed to doing any kind of the business. And gotcha. I, so I did 21 day extreme and I loved it and saw results like immediately. And I was like really hesitant about the shakeology, but I totally dig it. And yeah, I'm an ingredients girl. So I, I like it. Superfoods through the roof. Cool. Yeah. So, you did, so you did 21 day fix extreme and shakeology in October, fell in love with, with that, and then decided, all right, I think I want to help other people with this as well. And yep. so, cool. So you've been doing it for about a month and a half, two months now? And Yep, yep. I started um, coaching last month, pretty much. So I'm, I'm, I'm a newbie. Nice. So what's the, yeah. what's the, the game plan for 80-day uh, Obsession? Well, pretty much I'm still building um, kind of my um, – you know, people, my tribe, I guess you could say, but I, I do make sure that I show up every day. So I'm constantly posting on my Instagram, um, constantly connecting with people, um, pretty much every day I do the stories and it's, it's been crazy. My Instagram's jumped to like 200 more people within four weeks, which is crazy. That's awesome. Very yeah, cool. Thanks. cool. It's been fun. So we're, we got a bunch of other questions that we're going to throw out that I think you're going to have some really good input for. I'm excited to hear your answer. Great. Awesome. Cool. So next we got uh, Kate Morgan. Hi. Hey, what's up, Kate? Where are you from? Um, so I'm originally from Colorado, and I moved out to California um, like a year ago. Awesome. And, and who's your coach? Um, Ashley Paul Dyson. Nice. And how long did you – stalk her before you became a coach or did how long did she stalk you well i don't really know how long she was stalking me but i liked one of her transformation pictures back in like march mm -hmm. um, and then she had messaged me based on that and i just joined the challenge group like right away um and i did challenge groups for like two months and then i stopped because i was like transitioning out of the job that I had going to a new job and we were moving and all this stuff. So I just kind of like, I was a discount coach too. And I just stopped um, my Shakeology orders and everything. And then, and she from the very beginning told me to become a coach. Um, and I was just like, no thanks. Like I have other stuff going on. Um, and then finally, and we kept in contact, like her and I are really good friends along with um, one of the girls that was in the challenge group before with me. And then Two weeks ago, I decided to jump in. <laughs> Two weeks ago. So you were, you've been doing like challenge groups like on and off since March yeah. and like kept coming back to the products and everything and then decided, all right, I'm in. And you, so now you've been doing it for like less than a month. You're at Success Club 34. Yeah. And so, if, you, if you count my second business center, my fiance, then I'm like Success Club 36 or 38. Dang. All right. So... We're talking like 17, 16, 18 people that you've, that you've helped get on board with a challenge pack and you're going to help them now with a challenge group. So I don't know if you are even thinking about 80 day obsession right now because you're so new. Oh, um, no, heck yeah, I'm thinking about it. Oh, you already are. All right, cool. So are these people that are, that are doing it, like they're, some of them are jumping in with an 80 day, this uh, one $170 80 day obsession, all access challenge pack. Maybe yeah, mo most of them are, um, yeah. So. so for those that don't know, so that obviously there's the $160 challenge pack. That's like the greatest offer Beachbody's ever had. You get a year of Beachbody on demand, a month of Shakeology, the containers. And now they like up themselves. And now they have this one that's 170 where you get all that plus 
you get the 80 day obsession accessories all for 170 for an, so it's an extra 10 bucks and you get the accessories, which usually by themselves are like 50. Yeah. So what's, so what do you think? What's the, what's kind of the, the way you've been reaching out to people? How, how have you gotten, you know, 16, 17, 18 people kind of right off the bat? Um, so I kind of had a really big community and following already on Instagram. I already had like 1300 followers when I started, um, because I have a teacher Instagram because I have like a teacher or I had a teacher lifestyle blog and now I'm like transitioning it over into like fitness and teaching. Um, and so I had a big following from that and I had like a community of teachers that I interacted with daily. Um, and so a lot of them are teachers that I just know from Instagram. Um, some are teachers that I work with at my school. Um, and I basically, I do the Instagram story thing um, every single day. I film my workouts every morning. Um, I get up at four o'clock to answer messages until 4.45 when I get up and I work out before I go to school and teach all day. Um, and so I show like teachers, like, I know you say you don't have time, but like if I can do it, you can do it. Um, and I think that's like really big for them because um, we're, everyone's exhausted at the end of the day. And so I think just showing them like I'm getting up every single day and I'm recording myself doing these workouts at five o'clock in the morning, like come do it with me. Right. So a lot of these, these people are probably have probably been watching you on your Instagram stories for a long time, not just like recently, they've been watching you all year since you started that first challenge group in March. Mm -hmm. So they know that this is something that you've been doing a long time. Yeah. And I think like I, since I did take a break from like focusing on my fitness and stuff for a few months. Um, I think me just being real about that to them too, like just being like a lot of people are like, Oh, you're so motivated. And I'm like, I am not motivated. Like I do not want to wake up at four o'clock in the morning and go get this workout in. Like I don't, but I committed to it. So I do it anyways. Right. So I just share that. So that's awesome. Super relatable. That's, love that. Love it. All right. We're going to get back to you. I know we are. So, um, we got a bunch more questions. So, all right. Let's go to uh, Jolie. Hi, everyone. Jolie. All right. So where are you from? I am from New York. New York. Awesome. Yes. And who's your coach? Me, right? Yeah. Um, I don't know if you know him. It's this guy named Pat. Have you heard of him? Yeah. Uh, so. <laughs> I heard you saw that guy. Um, so, yeah, so you, you were a coach for like a while and you had a coach and, and your coach quit and, yes. but you always kind of, you knew about like the workout programs and, and you had used them and had been a part of like a challenge group and the coaching opportunity, but the team mm -hmm. you were part of kind of wasn't, wasn't doing the whole thing. Um, right. so I took a step back from it. And then how long were you kind of watching um, I guess, but how long were you like watching that coach before you decided to join, join them like back in the day? Do you have any? Um, well, she was a personal friend of mine, so I, it was less than you. <laughs> yeah. It still took me somewhere between three to six months before I actually said, well, I should probably do something about this. I should call her up. Yeah. Um, and then, uh, when I came back into it and I was cyber stalking you, uh, <laughs> that was about a good year, right? Yeah. Um, of well, you following up and me being like, no, no, I got it, no. And I obviously didn't have it, but. <laughs> so, so here's like a, a, a little tip. When I, I, I'll get on the phone with people that, I mean, I got on the phone with you, I don't know how long ago that was, right? Like just because we were talking on Instagram, I thought yeah. you had great energy. I was like, hey, let's just hop on a call and chat. And you were like, not right now. It's not a good thing. Mm -hmm. And I like put you on my little like kind of list of people that I wanted that I really was like, man, I would love to work with this person. And I had it on my little whiteboard. And so I would see it all the time. And I would just reach out to you. Like even just, it was like once a month, maybe just shoot you a text yeah. to see how things were going. And slowly but surely you were getting more and more ready. And I think, I don't know, six months it took a year, maybe a year, back. close to two years. Yeah. <laughs> so just having like a little, like somewhere where you have your, the people you really feel good energy about that you want to continue to reach out to and, and stay in touch with huge, made a, makes a huge difference. Cool. So 
yeah. you decide, all right, I want to get back into this challenge group thing. Um, yeah. You did my challenge group. Uh, when was that? Back in July. July. So you did the challenge group, fell in love with that. Yes. And, uh, and you were like, all right, I want to do, I want to be a coach. I want to give people the same experience. You started yeah. your own little free group and uh, now you're getting people that are from the free group that are doing the challenge group. Which yeah. Do you, so jumping into the first question Brooke asked, any, any kind of like plan for 80 day obsession or um, anything you've already kind of started to do? Yes. Yeah, so um, I started, as you and I have spoken before, I love actual conversations with people. So I have gotten on the phone with people that uh -oh. I want to, to, to join me. And I already got three commitments from people like, yes, we're going to do this, you know, because it's so different, you know, in comparison to like a post or um, even an IG story. But when I can have that, you know, when they can hear my voice, when they can hear how excited or how absolutely terrified I am of committed for <laughs> committing for 80 days, but being so real about it. Right. And just saying, look, I know it seems like a big deal, but you know what? Let's do it. We'll do it together. I got you. You got me. Like, it's going to be fine. Everything's going to be fine. So it's made such a difference. Um, I've definitely gone on. Um, I follow Autumn on Facebook, she does live videos. I've been following that and just familiarizing myself with the program so that I know what I'm talking about, um, which came in handy with a conversation today. Um, and on my IG stories, I, I keep saying like, okay, it's about to get real. Things are about to get real in January because I know so many people are looking for something because I see people posting and I'll comment like, oh, well, I found something, you know, it's, it's serious. Like I've gotten great success. You, you don't even understand. So just generating that buzz and uh, I'll get responses on my ID stories. Like, wow, what are you doing? You know, like you, why, you're so excited. You were up at 11 o'clock doing a workout. I'm like, my body actually craved it. Like this is, you know, this is what happens. So those are some of the things that I've been doing to prepare. Love it. Love it. You guys hear like one thing that every single person has said? IG stories. Is that what you guys were thinking? That's what I, like everyone said that everyone it's like, and it's not just our team. Every leader I talk to, it's like the thing right now. Everyone that's killing it is on IG stories. So people get to see them show up and just be real and goofy and crazy and be themselves. And they're just doing it every day. And, um, also, and also the excitement. The excitement, the energy. They have energy. the buzz, the buzz. Yeah, yeah. I, I heard the word buzz. Buzz, yeah, for sure. Energy, events, IG story. Jolie's hopping on calls with people so they can, they can really feel her energy too, which is great. It is, it's energy, it's buzz, it's excitement. Um, okay, so let's see who's next here. Uh, Courtney Meadows in the house. Hello, so Courtney, hello. What's up, Courtney? So Courtney's uh, one of my new coaches. Uh, Courtney, where are you from? Right outside of Washington, D.C. in McLean, Virginia. I've lived in Fort Lauderdale for about a year and a half now. So South Florida. Nice. South, South Florida. Yeah. Um, okay, so you and I connected through uh, Instagram. Yeah. And then... I, ran, I think you may have been on, like, the Explore page... Or something I like randomly came across your page and I think I followed you for like maybe like a week but I've actually been using Beachbody's products for eight years so once I started looking at his Instagram um, I could kind of see his style and that he was really serious about it and he wasn't one of those coaches that goes in and then quits after a while uh, so I actually reached out to him first and kind of just said I want to be a coach isn't that <laughs> kind of just yeah those, those Instagram uh, explore pages are awesome. And like that fact that you can like look at a story of a town or a city. Like that's, I like that really. That's like why I always tag a location on all of my videos and pictures. Yeah, exactly. Because you're in Delray too. That's probably how I found you. Yeah. Uh, okay, cool. So, Bren, I mean, you've been doing the, the workouts for, for, for eight years now um, and not in crushing Shakeology. So, any, I get, you're so new that maybe the 80 day obsession question isn't the best one. Any, just how about anything you just wanted to share about so, like game plan? Yeah. Um, 
So for 80 day obsession, I've been, I haven't been doing any like mass marketing via any of my like social media channels. It's been more of like trying to build my credibility up because I used to post a lot a couple years ago and then I kind of fell off and I was still using the products that I wasn't posting as much. So I've been literally posting probably like nine or 10 times a day on my Instagram stories. And it's been more about people reaching out to me being like, wow, you've been killing it. Um, what are you getting ready for? And then I'll individually be like, Hey, $170 challenge pack, 80 day obsession. I'm super excited about it. Like they asked her to create something for abs and, and, but, and she said that she was going to need much more than 30 minutes to create a killer workout like that. So she created this program. Like, and I'm just like genuinely so stoked about it that people are um, asking me more questions, but I need to definitely um, learn more about the exact specifics because I've sold one already and I have two others, um, but I've gotten lucky that they haven't been asking me like specifics about it. Um, but for me, it's been more of just like individualistically, like reaching out to people and answering their questions because they see that I'm back in action. kind of. Yeah. Instagram yeah. stories again, buzz again, and then reaching out to them again. Crazy, right? A lot of consistency with, with those things. Um, maybe something that would be really good, Courtney, would be to listen to the, the national call from, I think, maybe three weeks ago. In the, uh, okay. There's an app, right? Like, what's the name of that app that has all of the, the uh, recordings for the national call? Maybe someone can throw it in the chat. Because that, I like that because you can skip ahead to the actual meat of the call past like, the, all the um, rank advancement part. Because there's a number you can dial for the recording, but you've got to listen to that, the whole beginning part. Um, okay, I'll look into that. Yeah, that's a great one. Because I think you'll benefit a lot, like everyone else on this call, from, from listening to that and then creating like a holding group to really get people pumped up between now and January 15th, especially yeah. with the holidays and New Year's and all that going on. So I just created my first challenge group today, and I just have my one challenger that's in it right now. Should I be creating a separate channel? for a day day obsession and launch, like a holding group just for that, and then invite people in there and then do it the way that you guys were saying earlier, and yeah. then have my separate challenge group, okay. Yeah, and then like recognize those people in the holding group that actually buy, and then once okay. they like recognize them in there so the other people see that, and then you can move them to the group, the main group, the one that the people that are, have already purchased are, are going into. Okay, cool. Yeah. And like Beth said, like she's got two groups, right? She's got her challenge group and her holding group. And she's like just as active, if not more so in that holding group as she is in the, in the, uh, the group that the people are in that have already bought the challenge pack, the challenge group. Uh, all right, cool. So next, Brooke, I mean, are we going to be able to get through all these questions? Uh, next we got, um, Da, 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 da. Did I miss anybody? I think is any is there any other class of 2017 that hasn't had a chance? All right, let's just hop to the next question, and then if any yeah. new people hop on, we can go. So and I think I think the rest of these can be more like a like a quick response. Um, so kind of you know I have a bunch of questions, but I'm trying to piggyback off of what you guys were saying. So definitely, if you can share really quick, if you have any Instagram Instagram or Instagram story tips. Like if you have any specific things that you're doing that are really working for you, what you're doing with your, your viewers, like there's a little bit of chat in the chat. You know, some people are wondering what to do with them. I personally invite them all. Just, I just invite them. Um, but if you have any success doing something different, um, and I'm also curious too, if you could just tell us really quickly how many invites you do every day, just to give our perspective, Kate. Kate, go for it. And then anyone else that wants to share, you can throw your name in the chat and we'll uh, hit you too. Um, so I do the poll feature a lot. I do probably like a poll every single day. Um, so if I'm like doing something with 80 Day Obsession, I post like a series of the transformation pictures that were released with like comments about them. And then as they click through them, they get to the last one and it says like, are you ready to jump in? And I don't give them like a no like they don't get the option of no. Um, it's either like, heck yes, or like, I don't know, send me more information. And so then I look through that and I send like invites to all those people. Um, and then, yeah, or I do like yes or yes, or, you know, just like don't give them the option of no. 
Um, I've even done ones where I'm like, I'm ready to dive in or I'm waiting till 2018 because then I'm going to hit them with a message on January 1st and be like, you voted, you were waiting till 2018 and here we are. Um, so I use Instagram poll like every single day. Um, and then what was the other? Oh, how many invites I send every day? Um, I, I guess the question would be like, how do you do your invites? Like, do you, do you message everybody that responds to the poll or everybody that watches your story or how do you know when to reach out to people? So I do it like three different ways, um, on Instagram and then it's different for Facebook, but on Instagram I do, cause I do two posts a day. I do a post in the morning before I go to work and it's usually like something to do with my workout or I don't know. Um, and then I do one either when I'm like leaving my school cause I have a long commute home or when I get home. Um, <clears throat> and that one's usually like a selfie of some sort. And I message every single person that like or, or invite every single person that liked those posts. And if I've already sent them an invite within like the last couple of days, I don't. Um, but if it's a new person and then for, I message every, or I invite every single person that voted on the poll. And if they said like, yes, I'm ready to dive in, then it looks different than like, I'm looking for more information. Um, and then I, every single night, I message every single person that watches my story. Um, if I haven't hit them with a message yet, or um, if I have, and it's been a few days, and I get a lot of people that they're super interested and then they get hit with the price. And then they get like sticker shock and they don't respond, but I'll still follow up a couple days later and be like, Hey, I noticed that like, I don't know if you got my last message, but here's like, here's what I can do if like the price is too scary for you. Or I tell them like, it's really basically $12 a month if you think about it. Um, and yeah, I just, and I, I have like almost 1400 followers. And so there's a lot of people that watch my stories every single day. Um, but like I just copy and paste, copy and paste, like right before you go to bed and then, um, yeah. Cool. So. so you're doing, you're posting on your social media, you're reaching out to people that like your posts, you're doing the story, you're reaching out to everyone that does a story, you're doing the poll, you're reaching out to them. Yeah. Um, what's like, give us an example of like what kind of the verbiage you would use for someone that you see watching your story or liking one of your posts? Um, I usually say something, it's usually like a thank you message. Like, um, Hey girl, thank you so much for all the love and support. Like you have no idea how much that means to me. That's why I'm on this journey. Um, I noticed that you've been like liking my posts and you've been watching my stories. Are you interested in what I'm doing? Um, super simple. Awesome. Yeah. Just like, and also putting it, like, thanking them because, like, they're taking the time to look at your stuff and like your posts. Like, obviously, they can go like someone else's if they wanted. So, right. yeah, I love that you thank them for the support and then ask them if they, you know, if they want to be a part of it. That's cool. Yeah, because I think that's what really, like, I mean, for me, that's what got me to like join this whole community was just because like everyone is so loving and I just want to like love on everyone. And sometimes I kind of like freak people out because I just love them so much, right. but um, <laughs> like some people it really works. And so I just right. go with it. Cool. And then if they don't respond, you, you do, you'll follow up with them and, and just see what's, what's like an example of like a follow up. Um, so I had someone that was like, no, it's too much money. I've tried Beachbody before. Like, I'm not interested. And she's a teacher and she has like three kids and she was using like all these different excuses. Um, and then I think it was like five days later, I was like, you're still liking my posts. You're still like watching my stories. I really think this would be really awesome for you. And I really need you to help me hold myself accountable. Like, will you please just jump in with this? Like jump in with me. Like, Try it for a month. If you hate it, you can quit. Yeah. And it's just, um, and she jumped in with a 80 day obsession challenge pack. Yeah. So. Awesome. I love how you make it like, Hey, let's, it's not like you should do this. It's like, Hey, like let's do this together. And I really could use your support in this as well. We'll support yeah. each other the whole way through. Love that. Copy that from Ashley. Nice. I'm not surprised. That's cool. So what's your Instagram name? Just, if anyone wanted to kind of follow what you're up to. Um, 
It's lunges and literacy. Lunges and, and literacy. Yeah. Awesome. Love it. Sweet. All right. Um, did anyone else respond here, Brooke, that said they wanted to share? I can't see. Or you can just raise your hand if you, if you had yeah, any Instagram else? story stuff. Any Instagram story tips? If not, that's fine. What's the, what, what you for the next question? Is that Marie's hand? Do you, I mean, I'm not, I'm not really new, but I can share like some of the things I do on Instagram with you. Oh, want. you're like, you're like a, a senior. We're looking for like freshmen right now, Marie. You're like, senior, you're the upper classmen out of here. What's going on? No, go ahead. Yeah, what do you got, Marie? I'd love to hear it. You sure? <laughs> I'm just giving you shit. Um, well, basically, like, I guess I'm a lot older than like some of you like younger people that are talking about like what you're doing. So for me, like, it's kind of cool because I'm, I'm going to be 39 on Friday, like super, like I'm a lot older than like, some of you 25 year olds that are like killing it. I thought you so were like a lot now. of, yeah, I'm like super old right now. But um, anyway, some of you guys, like, I think a lot of people my age, and maybe I'm wrong, but a lot of the girls that are my age are absolutely miserable. Like they're 39, they're working all day, they have kids, they're exhausted, they have tons of anxiety. And a lot of the girls that are my age in my peer group, not all, but majority of them are dealing with a lot of weight gain and all that. So on my Instagram stories, I try to post, you know, my husband hot mess mom life, you know, during the day, like laundry and um, craziness. But then I'll show where I actually showered and I'm dressed up and I'm having wine or I'm with my friends and I've quit my teaching job. And I throw in like a lot of things that are normal to women my age, but then I throw in things that are like, wow, like she's happy and, you know, likes her job and has fun with her kids and loves her husband like I would like to maybe go over there because you know things like that and and I used to watch Andrea and you know back and I was like you know that is a really like amazing mm -hmm. life to have as a mother to be able to do what she is doing but also have fun look fabulous and you know really like enjoy your life and it's kind of enticing for people and it's real, but then I'll share stuff like, you know, my kids are like having a battle, like beating each other up with our cups and pans in the kitchen. And then like, I'm out doing cool stuff with you guys or living the coach life stuff, which is fun because most women my age um, are just not most, but a lot of girls that I know are just, they, they just give up and they're stuck. Right. So I try to share the hot messness, but like, Wow, like I'm really having fun over here. <laughs> hot mess, oh, yeah. hot mess life, but looking fabulous at times as well, which is cool. Well, bit. I mean, it sounds weird, but it's good to like mix it in together because it pulls in a lot of Real. like pulls in a lot of people, and they're like, "Wow, if if she could do that and actually do that, like I can." So. Yeah, that's awesome. So, are you are you now getting most of your people, you new, new challengers and things like from your Instagram? Yeah, show? yeah. Like, I just wrote down, like, literally, these are all the people from the stories. This is yesterday, and I see the little checks next to them. Those are all the people that I messaged. And if I go to my original post, you know, like, a selfie, hey, I got up and worked out. Like, eight people care. Like, no one cares. And then I'll do, like, my stories and stuff and write all the people down before I go to bed. And um, I've been really consistent with that. And it's really, it's blowing up. So that's you cool. kind of do something similar that Kate said, where you'll reach, you'll like write those names down and you reach out to each of them and thank them mm -hmm. for the support. Yeah. And, and then see yeah. if you want to join. Or and then I say, do you want to do this with me? Because um, I used to do it wrong and say, do you want to do this with me? Because I mean, I need the accountability. Like I've worked out twice this week and I've eaten all the tacos. Like I need help too. <laughs> you know? So people like that instead of like, hey, I'm over here eating kale because like I'm not. Right. Right. I love that. So the stories are you're killing it. You're reaching out to them, thanking them, and then letting them know like, hey, I need support with this just as much as you. I think it'd be fun to do this together. Yeah. Because otherwise they're going to say, I can't get up at five like you. I'm too busy. I'm too stressed out. Like, good luck with your little group because that's not for me. Right. Right. Love that. Again, stories. 
Uh, okay. So anybody else have anything for, with the stories that, that hasn't been shared yet? Any tips on that? Or should we move on? Any tips? I have one tip that um, is actually Joe's tip. Um, so I can't take credit for it, but he talked on one of our team calls. Yeah, Joe, you <laughs> about um, having the great idea of tagging locations, even though, even if you're not there, like if you're, if you're doing a home workout, like tag the closest gym near you so that people are watching that or seeing that you're working at home or like, you know, I'm talking about, I don't know, it could be anything like talking about staying home with my kids and you can tag like a daycare center or school or something, you know, something that has to do with your niche or where you, you know, what your goals were with your business. Um, I thought that was kind of neat because I never really thought about that. Yeah. yeah, I got that from another coach. Um, and it was, it was so awesome. I mean, he, like, he was like, I tagged this gym down and I, he like tags the same gym. I've been like kind of floating it around, um, and picking like a new gym every day and just sort of like putting my whole story on it. And I like shrink the tag so small that you can't even see it. And I actually, I mean, you guys know I work out in the attic, so I have fun like hiding the tag. So like, you can't even tell where it is. I'll like sometimes for it now. my beard. Yeah. <laughs> oh, you put it in your beard. So I thought you like, I do you put, put it in my beard my sometimes. Beard. Yeah. That's funny. Cool. So, but it's kind of funny. I hide it in the background and everything like that. And I noticed that like, you know, I've been like, if I don't tag it, I'll get like anywhere between like 25 and 50, maybe um, people like viewing that particular story clip. Right. But if I tag it, I get those same people. Plus I'll get like an extra like 50 or 80 depending. And you'll pick, sometimes you'll pick a crappy gym and not that many people will do it. But like there'll be times like I'll, I'll do like Planet Fitness in Boston. And so I'll get on like the Planet Fitness tag, but I'll also get on the Boston story as well. And that's like huge. Um, so like you get on the Boston one, you instantly pick up like 50 more. But the problem with that one is it's, it's kind of like when you're tagging on a regular Instagram post, if you just tag like fitness, you're there for like a second and then you're just gone. Like, cause so many people use that tag. So mm -hmm. like the Boston one, you're not there for that long. Can you see who saw your story? Like, I know it says like no. the number of people that saw it, but you can't see like who they are, right? You can, but the, the good thing is I, I think it helps with engagement. Like the more people that see it, <clears throat> it does help improve it. But then also if people start seeing you on a regular basis, you might, you'll pick up more followers. Yeah, definitely. Love it. Any, anything else on the IG story? This call was, we could have said this was like an IG story call. Well, I kind of want to go off on that too. Cause like I picked up actually a challenger from my location like her coach vanished on her and she was like hey what can I do to like be with you and like learn from you and I was like well you know come on and, and the good thing is we're like planning to meet up and do a workout one day so in a way it's kind of like nice to know who's in your area that you know someone can need a challenger or you know help to be a coach so that kind of made me feel good <laughs> yeah that's awesome my mom's big on like the buzz right so like there's one of the best ways to, to create buzz is to have a local challenger or a local team. Cause I get to let you get to hang out with them and, and do all those cool things, which is awesome. All right. Hey Pat, hey, Pat before we finish, just because I did say it's Beth. Hey, because, what's up? can you hear me? Yeah. <laughs> because I did say that I'm not on Instagram cause I'm kind of a one trick pony right now. Um, and I probably always will be <laughs> is that you know, on Facebook stories, you can do pretty much the same stuff. I mean, you can't tag your location, but I do the same stuff that you guys are doing in Instagram. And so say I have 2000 friends on Facebook right now, I'm about at 800 people are looking at my story every day. Wow. So, That's crazy. So if you're consistent in it, it's really helpful. So like consistency is key and you need to be like pretty normal. Like Marie said, like be your authentic self. Um, I do not post a ton of workout selfies or anything in there. I just post my life like I would on Snapchat. Gotcha. I was actually just texting with uh, uh, Mark Zuckerberg earlier, and he was saying that like the Facebook stories, you guys catch that? I was, he was saying that like the Facebook stories, you guys, like some of you bought that first. Fibbing. Um, but some, he was saying that 
the Facebook stories are getting bigger and bigger and he's, and he's created like an option now on Instagram stories to share it to your Facebook story. So if you are doing an IG story, you don't have to do it again on Facebook. You can share it automatically right to your Facebook story. And he's creating notifications now that are showing up on people's news feeds that say that uh, someone's posted it in their Facebook story. And it's saying like this person's Facebook story has been viewed this many times, which is like, Oh, I should go view it too. Um, so that's definitely true. the Facebook that's stories are, are like he was saying are going to be the next big thing. And, and now if somebody likes your, like sends a little emoji, you get a private message from that person. Like this person loved on your yeah. Facebook story. Yeah. That's really cool. Awesome. Um, How do you get that to work though? Cause I actually selected that on Instagram to be able to share and it never goes over there. It looks like Wendy, I think Wendy might know that because I'm trying to figure out how to do it too. Like I, I've linked my account, my Facebook account, and I think I might have linked my like page on Facebook and I can't figure out how to link my personal Facebook. Ah, maybe yeah, that's yeah. it because I, I think I'm, I might be linked to my like page. I don't know. Can you hear me? Yes. Okay. I don't know what the deal is with like business pages, but that seems to be the problem a lot of people are having is that their Instagram is a, a business account. So it's linked to their like page. So it posts to like a story on your like page, but it's not your personal page. So that stinks. And then a lot of people say that like, they just don't have the option. And it's because you just need to like, there's a place on Instagram if you go into settings. Um, and then there's like an option that says link accounts and you can link your Facebook account to your Instagram and you can link your personal account. Um, and then it will give you the option to just share directly from Instagram to your Facebook. Right. For Joe, if you figure out how to unlink your, your business page and link your personal page, you got to teach me how to do that because I'm, I'm going to let you know, I'm, it's, 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 I'm on a mission now because I was posting, I was actually posting on my Instagram story and you can save it to your camera roll. So I was uploading it to my, Facebook yeah, messenger yeah. story and then to my Insta and to my Facebook story, but the Facebook ones take forever to upload videos. Right. So yeah, I yeah. gave up on it and I was only getting like about 20 people watching anyway. Yeah. So Beth, I, I have no idea how you're getting like 800. Yeah. That's well, great. I'm, a, I'm a really cool person, Joe. <laughs> yeah. Yeah. Way <laughs> more interesting. Yeah. 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 So I think it's going to, I I've noticed that when I do share it on the Facebook story, the amount of people that are seeing it is going up and up um, pretty, pretty fast. I think because I think Facebook's putting a big emphasis on Facebook stories now. All right. I, I will figure it out and I will, um, uh, I'll probably post uh, something in the boom fam. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, Wendy, I'm going to unmute you for a sec. Cause you're class of 2017, right? So real quick, you got it. Where where are you from? Can you hear me? Sorry, like yeah, got gotcha. you. Okay, um, I grew up right outside of DC in Maryland, and I now live in Raleigh, North Carolina. Nice. And we're going to the Duke Syracuse basketball game in February, which I'm pumped about. Yeah. And we're gonna we're we're gonna wear orange. Are we gonna wear orange for Syracuse? Well, then you'll get kicked out. So. All right. All right. Um, so who's your coach? Caroline Nathan. Awesome. And then how long were you guys like, were you watching her or how long did she have to follow up with you before you finally decided to do a challenge group? Um, like once I was kind of, I kind of jumped right in That's nice. um, that her timing was impeccable. I was the first year teacher last year and like totally fell off the wagon with taking care of myself. Um, so she messaged me actually like around this time last year. Um, I joined, her January challenge group and then became a coach in February. So like did one challenge group and then became a coach. Gotcha. And do you think like recently the last few months, like all of a sudden you've kind of like gotten more and more into the coaching. And if so, like, what do you think was like that, that trigger for you? Yeah. Um, <clears throat> I was super into it at first. Then I um, had a lot of trouble at my, job at the end of the school year and ended up leaving my school um and just kind of went through like a really weird period um in terms of like not having a job and looking for a job and uh, really just like fell off the wagon with coaching then summit happened and I like got like way back into it 
um, like really mostly into like my personal fitness journey, but that really helped me like be more consistent about posting and like having people notice like my commitment to it. Right. Um, and then I went to GoPro in November, like a month ago. Yep. And I think that was like really a game changer. Like I'm just like with everything significantly more consistent now. And, um, I don't know, just a lot more focused on, on everything. I don't know. I'm crushing it on your own yeah. stuff and, and, and the business too. Huh? Yeah. Interesting events and buzz, right, mom? Yeah. We're funny how that works. Uh, I know. All right. So we're like way over the nine o'clock. Uh, so I know you guys got to hop off for, for any of you that want to hop off. Um, but, uh, does any, if people do want to stay on, like, I think Brooke does have a few more questions unless she has to bounce, but uh, for good. you guys that got to leave, like, thanks for hopping on. And then for anyone that wants to stick around, um, I don't know, Brooke, you want to keep, I, I'm kind of liking this call. I think this is fun. So maybe we keep asking sure. questions. Yeah, sure. Okay. Um, let me see. This is a big one. I'm interested to hear what people say too, is, um, what has helped you, and this might be a tricky for brand new coaches, but what has helped you convert challengers to coaches? Stumper. I mean, we all know, you know, the best challenge, the best coaches are challengers first and the, you know, the experience and the five best friends, but anything specific that you do or that you found helpful or that's worked for you. Just curious. Anything you guys do in like in your challenge groups that has helped like increase participation or made the experience even better? Anything you do like individually with your challengers outside of the challenge group? Jolie? Yeah. So um, I can speak to what I'm doing to kind of cultivate that um, love for this, for this community. And it's around just – giving them an amazing experience. Like I consistently check in with them. I, we get on Zoom calls. I just want them to feel that they're supported. Um, and whoever you know is in our free group, there is not one person that does not get a like, a comment, some type of encouragement. I mean, it's about making people feel like they're important. And the more that you do that, the more that they invest, not just in themselves, but in the community and what, we mean when we say team beach body right. so that when i get to the point where i have that conversation with someone like is this something that you want to continue to experience is this something you want to share with your friends you know it's a much easier conversation because i'm getting the feedback that you know i love this i wouldn't have been able to do this without you or without you know elizabeth or without pat or whatever the case may be so it's all about the experience that we're giving them yeah you're super active, you know, you're with them and you're super active in the group. You're relatable because you're, you're not just putting them in a group. Like you are a challenger right along with them, sharing the ups, the downs, being vulnerable and reaching out bad to them. And ugly. Showing yeah. Yeah, you back the other and the ugly showing and you're sharing, you know, giving them a lot of love and recognition for the little things, for the effort, for the results, for all of it. So definitely anybody else. Trish? Um, I'm like, like I said, I haven't had, you know, that many challenges, but like going off of like learning from Danielle and everything, like, I think, you know, um, I like the idea of engaging, you know, of course, staying with everybody, whether it's Facebook, Instagram, you know, tracker. But I also like the idea, a friend of mine who's in another completely different talent group that her coach made her do, oh, you know, pick somebody that you know that's in Beachbody and have them be your accountability partner too, like have that communication. And I think that really what drove me too. And I'm like, I think I want to in, implement that into mine to like, be like, hey, if you know somebody who is in another challenge group, you know, engage with them. Maybe, you know, that will push them a little bit more, even though, yes, they're in a Facebook group. But I think like them being on the outside of it might help push each other better, if that makes any sense. Yeah, 100%. I love that, that one too. I do that a lot. Awesome. Anybody else on the... Was the question like, how do you give your people a great experience or was it, how do you get them to become coaches? Like, like having coaches, like converting customers to coaches. Gotcha. But I mean, that has a huge yeah. part of it. Like, I think that the whole, like the, the, 
the better the experience you give your people, I think the more people are going to buy a challenge pack to become customers because they're going to know that you're not just selling something. There, there's an experience that comes along with it and you come along with it. Right. And then the better the experience they actually have, the more likely they're going to want to become a coach. And if they do become a coach, they're going to be a better coach because they're going to give that same experience to their people. Um, so yeah, huge. That's like kind of the foundation of everything. But I guess Beth, uh, Beth has something you on how to give them a great experience or how to then introduce them to coaching. And then Wendy, so, I saw your hand up. Well, too. Okay. okay. I wouldn't say that I'm the best at converting them to actually coaching in the coaching business, but I have really good success converting them to a discount coach first um, because I plant that seed before I sell them a challenge pack. Mm -hmm. Because I tell them up front, like, you're going to love Shakeology. You're going to want it every day. Your body's going to need it every day. Here's the price for this up front. And we'll talk about how to get you on the discount when your, per when your package arrives. Right. Because you're going to want to be set up for the discount prior to the next month being auto-shipped. Right. And so I, I plant that seed really early on so that when they're – and then I say – message me as soon as your package arrives. Like I don't track their packages. They get stuff from Beachbody. I don't need to do that work for them. When their package arrives, I say, send me a private message. Let's make sure everything's in the box that's supposed to be there. And then as soon as they email me that or message me that that's there, I do say, let's talk about getting you hooked up on the discount right away. We're all on the discount. Everybody in the challenge group is on the discount. Right. Love that. Awesome. So converting them then to coaching in the business, I feel like just like Pat said and everybody else says, they have to watch us for a while. And right. Because I give them such a great experience. I think there's a fear that they're not going to be able to do that. Yeah. So I think one, one little key phrase that's really worked for me over the years has been, uh, you're doing an awesome job in the group. Have you ever considered doing what I do? I think you'd be great at it. Like, something along those lines. And, and, I, and, and I don't say that to like every challenger, you know, I say it to the ones that are super consistent showing up all the time. I'm like, hey, super consistent in the group. The other people in the group are benefiting from having you in there. Have you ever considered doing what I do? And if they say no, it's not like they're saying, no, I don't want to do it. They're just saying, no, I haven't considered it yet. And if they say yes, I ask them, awesome. Like what's motivating you to consider it in the past? And then we can talk more about that, which is cool. Um, what about uh, you, Wendy? I, I saw your hand go up there for a second about trying to, how do you introduce your challengers to the coaching opportunity? So kind of like Beth said, but talk about discount coaching first. Um, Cause for some people it's like just a lot easier to wrap their minds around. Like I'm just like getting a discount on this stuff. Right. Uh, and then also like, it doesn't hurt if you throw in that they can get some uh, something off at Lululemon. Um, but, That's true, right? Like, what, yeah. what's our discount? What a beach yeah, like party coach? 25% off at Lululemon. 25% off at Lululemon if you're a beach yeah. party coach? Yeah. Oh, that's pretty um, cool. So, like, for a lot of the, like, you know, young 20s girls my age, like, that's a really popular little hook. Um, yeah, yeah. I just got but, some Lululemon for Christmas, a little early Christmas present. You could have gotten it 25% off. I live in it. It's fine. <laughs> Cool. Um, but then also, I just remember um, one, like, saying, you know, to awesome challengers, like, have you ever considered doing what I do? But also throughout the group, giving them opportunities to kind of step up in the group or, like, you know, in order to get, like, points, like, get onto the leaderboard, you need to, like, post this on your personal Facebook page. Just, like, give them little opportunities to, like, taste what it's like to just do little coaching activities Right. Um, and then once you present them with that idea at the end, like, Hey, you did an awesome job in the challenge group. Like, have you ever considered doing what I do? Then they're kind of like, Oh, I've already kind of done some of that. Like, sure. Tell me more about it. Yeah. It's huge. I think people like, I think customers think there's this huge gap between a customer and a coach. No, and yeah. then if you start getting them to do some of the things in the challenge group, like posting the daily thread and encouraging the other people, you start to kind of bridge that gap. So the coaching opportunity doesn't seem like that big of a, of a jump. They're kind of already doing a lot of the things that, uh, that we do as coaches. Yeah. Yeah. Awesome. Uh, what do we got for, we got time. We'll, maybe one more question quick. Sure. Um, what about posting? We haven't talked about posting 
too much? Like, do you have a schedule that you follow or, you know, any sort of template that you try to follow or a schedule or, or what, you know, what have you found? Do you pre-plan your posts? Do you kind of just do them on the fly? You know, what have you found that works for you? Yeah. Well, you guys can raise your hand. Anybody that just wings their posts, who just wings it, like doesn't have a schedule, doesn't have a plan, just kind of like posts when they feel like it here and there. And then yes and no though. I, I, I just wing what I'm going to say, but I always plan like times of the day, not necessarily like 9am, but I always have a morning post. I always have like a late afternoon. People are checking Facebook at like 3pm because they're bored and want to go home. And then like a PM post. And I usually have like, and I usually have like the morning is more like, um, fitness, inspiration, motivation type of thing. My, uh, there was a national wake up call like a month or two ago. The girl did the schedule and it's pretty much what I do anyway. And then the afternoon's more like, um, you know, hitting home with like your family life, your personal life, something. And then at night she's talked about um, hitting the pain points, like, you know, in terms of fitness and the business, because that's when people are just, they're exhausted from their day. They don't want to think about going back to work tomorrow. They're just kind of sitting, scrolling. You know, I have my mom niche, you know, they put their kids to bed, they've done bath time and they're just exhausted and they're just kind of aimlessly scrolling so that they don't have to go do their, you know, mom things. So that's the time to really hit the like, that's when I find the, you know, my um, call to action for challenge groups or coaching Steve Peaks do the best is at night. Pain points meaning like the things that people are struggling with, like yeah. hashtag meet them in the shit. Yeah. Cool. So that's what works for me. I don't know if anybody has different strategy. I try, I post like once a day and I post at like 6 PM every day and kind of switch it up. I try to like share personal. I notice like when I share a personal story, like a pain point story or like something that happened, like something I, you know, my boss one time, like getting mad at me or, or, you know, little, little personal stories from back in the day. Um, and kind of how I've like gotten past that stuff. Like that seems to resonate with people. Um, little simple things like, you know, humor or always get is always good or, um, educating, educating people on things that I'm really interested in. Like I, I try to structure my personal development around things I'm really interested in. And then that gives me great content for my posts. So the more the, the personal development I'm obviously helps me personally, but it also helps me with my posting, um, big time. So I kind of, I pick like three topics. I'm really like passionate about learning and getting better at personally making sure my personal development is tailored to towards those things. And then my content is tailored towards those three things. And I tend to like attract people that are interested in those same, those same things. Um, so it's kind of a win, win all, all on that based on what I'm picking my, my, uh, my PD topics and business development topics. But yeah, I just, I try to do one post a day at six o'clock is like my kind of my time that I, that I shoot that out. Anybody, yeah. anyone have like I, schedules? Like they actually have like every Tuesday they do a transformation Tuesday. Like every Monday they do a motivation Monday, like wacky when Courtney, do you have something? Yeah. I just had a question. Does anyone have multiple Instagram accounts? You're the only one. <laughs> I was going to ask you why, like I was looking at the, I was going through my stories and I was like, I think I thought I just saw her story. And then it was like yeah. a different Instagram name. I started it. Like I started it a while ago separate and I want to join them. But now I'm like in this awkward stage where I don't know if I, I mean, I should, I know that I should eventually join them. I just didn't know if I was the only one that used to do that. looks like Jennifer used to do it too, but, and then also does any, does everyone have Instagram business? What are the pros and cons of having that? I think the the reason for having it is you can see more insights. Like you can see people who are like actual analytics behind I, it. I, I think, think Jess is going to say something too. Can you guys hear me? Okay. Yeah. 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 Um, I think it's definitely worth it. I actually took a, a it's like a business page program for Instagram, and uh, they pretty much talked about how you can organize your Instagram to bring in more people to make it more interesting but yeah I you see a ton of information on your business page and big businesses here like in Colorado Springs the girl who does this program lives here in the Springs and um, the girl that had she had some kind of 
um, some gym that opened up, but she switched back and forth between personal and business. Um, ended up doing the business page because of all the analytics and grew her business like crazy to like 10,000 followers within like three months, which is insane. Wow. And okay, that's cool. It, cool. Awesome. Thank you. Yeah, that's great. So now you got to figure out which one you're going to get rid of. <laughs> yeah, that'll be interesting. Stay tuned, guys. <laughs> yeah. Cool. Uh, awesome. All right. I think we're getting a little late. Um, so why don't we wrap it up unless anyone has any last questions, anything else, Brooke, any, like any other questions you really wanted to hit on? I think you're muted. Oh, no, you're, you're sorry. Right. Those are the top ones. Those are good. That's good. Yeah. Awesome. Awesome. That was awesome. I really liked that, that call a lot. Um, so the, uh, the 2017, the freshman, the, the incoming class, thanks for, <laughs> hopping on and I think it's cool that you guys got to know each other um, because I think one of the things that had the biggest impact on my business was getting to know some of the coaches that were new kind of when I was um, not on my team really because I didn't really have a team at the time but like on other teams but you guys are lucky that you guys have that so what I would do now is is connect with each other you know like send each other requests on Facebook and and follow each other on Instagram and root each other on just like you guys would a challenge a challenge group or your challenger like root each other on as coaches in this thing um because that's i think one of the things that's going to help you guys so much is encouraging each other learning from each other supporting each other every step of the way uh class of 2017 represent so all right let's all right. do a little a little bit one more question quick question oh yeah what what did the upperclassmen have good advice to give us newbies oh we do that every week you don't want to you don't want to hear that now mm -hmm. Uh, that's, that's a whole next, next time, next time. <laughs> uh, yeah, one word, consistency. It's all I got. <clears throat> hey, Pat, I figured out how to link them. So I'll go live in the Boom Fam with a quick video. Oh, yeah. All right, cool. I'll, I'll give you one tip. Be here three to five years. Never yeah. give up. Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> Make it a lifestyle. Like, you got to just, you got to fall in love with the lifestyle of, of, you know, the simple workouts, simple nutrition, being a part of a group of people that are really positive reading good books, sharing your journey, and you make that a lifestyle and, and, and you're consistent with that and people start to notice that and you stay on that escalator, that escalator mindset thing for you know a year, two, three years, uh, you're <laughs> not only going to benefit personally because you're going to be doing those things and surrounding yourself with positive people on the team, but you're going to build a business because people are going to notice that and they're going to start joining you on that journey too. And uh, it starts to get really fun when that happens, but it just you got to make it a lifestyle and fall in love with it and, and just be real the whole step of the way. Uh, and, and people are going to either want to join you or not. And if they do great. And if they don't great, you're still doing this with or without them. And uh, just do you make it a lifestyle. Awesome. All right, let's do a little uh, boom on three. I'm going to unmute everybody here quick. Thanks for staying on a little bit later than normal. Uh, did everybody get on mute? All right, guys. Boom on three, and then we'll get out of here. One, two, three. Ooh. Class of 2017. All right, guys. I'll see you guys in the group. Bye. Night. Good night.